Go up the title again. Uh, a lot of it was 3D. There's a lot of 3D in here. And uh, 3D was a big challenge on the show in order to get 3D matching up with 2D. Uh, like I said, we had hired John Soar. The studio hired John Soar with me and uh, Joel Krasnov, the head of Nick Digital in New York, I believe is his title. Um, got together and had to figure out, okay, he's going to head up 3D out in the West Coast, Nick operation. And the prime thing was Zim. Zim had a specific 3D budget. And we found this guy, John, out of tons and tons of people that applied. A lot of people applied. A lot of guys were out of work. Uh, 3D studios were closing up in the L.A. Valencia area. John just seemed like a nice guy. And uh, he turned out to be a great 3D asset, quite frankly. Ooh, look at all those board artists. This, uh, this show went through a lot of revision. Um, I personally storyboarded this opening and I think I wrote it as well. It was entirely written. We originally you didn't see this Mars probe and it became very confusing when without this opening you just have this Mars probe returning. You don't understand where it's been or what it's seen. And I came up with this idea when Mary Harrington asked me, you know, told me she just found it very confusing. I had to board all this. It was never animated that great. But it basically tied together all the elements that would come to play later on in the story. Although then they found it confusing that you go from that to this. And uh, it happened a lot uh, that we didn't use linear storytelling in, uh, in Zim. Uh, you know, you're on a Mars probe, you sort of a question mark, you know, what's happening there? You know it's an Urkin symbol, you know it's on Mars and it's taking off. But they didn't like that you'd keep somebody in suspense for three or four minutes or make them wonder what that was so that they would hang on to find the rest of the backstory or the forestory by going to something else completely different. But we did it. A lot of people really like this show on the internet. I mean, I don't know about the average fan, but the internet people really liked it. And I really loved the tallest. The tallest, I think, really came back here. Jonan always wanted to write more about the tallest. He loved the tallest. He loved their officious uh, idiocy, pretty much. And it was good to see. I think it was a good choice to see where this invasion is going, this whole impending doom uh, operation. So here you can see one of these characters return, or one of the return characters from the first episode, Scooge. And Scooge played by Ted Raimi, Sam Raimi's brother, Sam Raimi being the director of the Spider-Man movie. And uh, a movie that Jonah and myself and many of the Zim crew really idolized, uh, Evil Dead 2. And Evil Dead 2 being one of the films that we sort of used as reference and inspiration for our sort of film style on Invader Zim itself. Ted Raimi is a really odd guy. <laughs> Ted, uh, he played Henrietta in, the, in Evil Dead 2, which is just really a weird role. He's covered in prosthetics. And we got him in to play Scooge. And boy, he's energetic. He's just a good guy. Great actor, I think. Just overwhelmingly energetic. Would beat us down with his uh, question of what the character is and what he's doing and whether he's, we want to do it as an old man or a young guy or a you know, Mafia Don, you know. Uh, but in the end, I think his Scooge voice is actually pretty uh, pretty lovable. I think it's a good choice. It was good to see the tallest a little bit, a uh, little bit of them interacting, how they deal with their, with their world, what they think of things, how they're taking care of business. It was a very complex story. There were so many, so many backgrounds. There were so many places that this took place. Uh, a lot of scenes uh, where this was set. You know, you're in, you're on Mars. You have all these pyramids. You're in space. You're, you're at Operation Impending Doom. You're on the surface of that planet, uh, of the Rat People. Uh, and of course, you're on the plants themselves. You're, you know, and the face. The face is changing. You see all this stuff in Zim's laboratory. You see, street scenes. Uh, and then, of course, there's all the planets that they fly around out, out in space. You go into the sun and such. There's NASA. There's the NASA control room. And, oh, it was just, this show was one of the heaviest, most complex episodes I think we had done at this point. And possibly ever in Zim. This is one of the top episodes for complex. And uh, a lot of work to get this together.
I had to reboard a good deal of this myself and explain a lot of things at Mary's request. Um, and I agree with her. I think it did need did need improvement in that area. And uh, eh. I hope the story isn't too confusing. I hope we did our job. <laughs> it's great. This Dave Crocker, the board artist, came up with this: a table on a table, <laughs> and the burning pig, which of course was not well liked as well by Nickelodeon. I had to board this whole takeoff thing, whole takeoff sequence. Our 3D budget was running down a bit by this episode. Uh, we had realized, I think, that we'd spent too much 3D. Um, John Sor suddenly was calculating up his 3D budget for the first 20 episodes. I mean, here we are in episode 13, two-thirds of the way through the series, and he shows up in my office one day with a horrible red face. Looks like he's getting hives or bumps all over his face. He's got tears in his eyes, but he's not crying yet. And he's trying to tell me that he thinks we're we're really just in bad shape with our 3D budget. I had never seen him that uptight. You know, he he would get a stiff neck and he couldn't turn his neck. He couldn't even look you in the face or talk to you, and you could just tell something was wrong. He never wanted to say no. I mean, it was great that he never wanted to say no. But you know, in cases like this, I always had to pry information out. And I said, "Don't worry about it, John." Whereas he used to make me at ease in the beginning of the series when we set up the 3D, and I had never done something like this before, but knew what I wanted to do. He was always telling me, don't worry, we can do it, we can do it. Later on, when it comes to the point where the budget's squeezing up, he's getting weird. <laughs> and I have to go, don't worry, John, don't worry, we'll take care of it. We'll, we'll do okay. You know, I'll, I'll make this work. Because I knew we could always rely back on 2D, although the 2D looked extremely cheesy compared to 3D. But we could always use it. It would tell the story. It just would be cheesy. But, uh, yeah, you can see some of the scenes where there should have been 3D ships and 3D planets and such. We had to sometimes cop out for 2D at this point. Luckily, the rest of the season didn't have much 3D after this point. And uh, we could save our money for our bigger finale, which was uh, or our biggest finale, uh, Tack. Great to see Professor Membrane at work. You sit here wondering what he's working on. This guy's this master of science, and what does he create? A ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> A great touch. I think the board eyes came up with that idea, but I'm not. I'm not certain. Uh, might have been Jonan. I think I remember Jonan saying something about doing that in the board pitch, or the script uh, script pitch. This is again a very complex sequence, this face unfolding. It was great to have a series that played off the uh, the occult like this, because uh, Dib was always into the occult, and they never expanded out on Dib's uh, occult very much. We were starting to. Um, Jonah was starting to get into more, more Dib versus occult stuff, and to have this, uh, the face on Mars, uh, from those fat, uh, famous NASA photos, you know, use it in a cartoon. That was really quite, quite good. Uh, we actually used the real face, if you want to call it a real face, as reference. Um, you know, it was good to sort of say, yes, this actually does exist. <laughs> At least in this world, it exists. It still has to be proved in. It still has to be proved in reality. Very difficult, though. This show, as you can see here, with the 3D planet, with all this coming out, very difficult to show the change in sizes. Uh, that was the biggest challenge, I think, of this episode, aside from just the pure man hours needed to make all this stuff work and, and move, was to show these small guys on these big planets. Um, there's Ted Raimi again, Ted playing the, uh, the Martian instruction manual. Yeah, this episode just had everything in it. This was just everything in the kitchen sink was in this episode, it seemed like. Uh, I don't think we ever show the school in this episode, but if we could have shown the school, we would have had that kitchen sink uh, filled.